Today's video is going to cover boxing things in Rust, which means we'll get into the stack, the heap, and a little bit about smart pointers. Are you as excited as I am? Let's dig in. So we're going to start by going ahead and creating a new Rust project. I'll use the cargo build tool and I'll run cargo new box test. This will create a new Rust project set up as a binary application that we can write our code in. So I'll change into the directory and we'll go ahead and fire up vim. We're going to start by creating a new struct um, to define like a, a user object and we'll keep this really simple. So I'll type struct user and then a curly brace hub name uh, and we'll make this a string. We can close out our struct. Now we'll go ahead and get the contents of our main function and we'll uh, create a variable using the let keyword. And in that variable, we'll define our user struct. So we'll call this user, and then we need to set our name property for the struct. So we can say name, and then we'll use the from function on the string, and we'll pass in a static string. Uh, I'll use Brad. Finally, we'll simply print the user.name in this case to make sure that it's working like we would expect. I already see a couple syntax issues that I need to clean up really quick, and then we can actually run this program and make sure that it works like you would expect. Let's go ahead and run our code and see what happens. So we can use cargo run, and wow, that was quick. So you can see that it output Brad to the console. So before we get into boxing, we actually need to talk about the stack. Now this is pseudocode, but it should be pretty easy to follow. We have a function called countdown that takes in an argument x. We print x. And if x is equal to zero, we return. Otherwise, we return countdown minus minus. So in the case of three, we'd have three, then it would call it with two, it would call it with one, and then it would call it with zero, and then ultimately return. What's important to note here is that the memory for this function is going to be allocated on a last in, first out data structure referred to as the stack. So if we pass in a three, the bottom frame of the stack, uh, called a stack frame, has three assigned to it. And by assigning three to the stack frame, this implies that the stack frame is allocating enough memory to hold three, whatever that type is. In Rust, we can choose to make it a 32-bit integer, a 64-bit integer. We can sign it or unsign it. There's a lot of options. But regardless of what we choose, we have to allocate enough memory to hold whatever X could be every time that we create a new stack frame. As we move through our function, we know that X is not equal to zero. So we return countdown minus minus. So we put a two on the stack and then a one on the stack. And we'll keep going with this until we hit our, our base case of zero, which will still allocate a stack frame. So we'll have zero on the stack. X is equal to zero in this case, so we can return. And now we're returning from this recursive function, which means we're slowly going to clear the call stack. So we'll go in the opposite order. So X is deallocated when it's zero, X is deallocated when it's one, X is deallocated when it's two, X is deallocated when it's three. So we're freeing that memory back up when we start to clear the stack frames from our function. In Rust, values are allocated on the stack by default, but you can choose to put things on another structure referred to as the heap or dynamic memory. While the stack has stack frames, the heap is more of a kind of like a box. You can put things in the heap and you can take things out of the heap, allocate and deallocate memory in this case. And it's far less strict about the size of things. There are also negative implications of the heap, namely that maintaining actual lookups for values in the heap are a lot slower than maintaining lookups in the stack uh, because we have to traverse the entire heap. We can't look at a specific stack frame. With that in mind, let's put some values on the heap. So we'll open up Vim again to the same file as before. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new user and we're going to put that in a box. So Rust has this concept of boxing and boxing is quite simply a smart pointer that puts things on the heap. So if you need to store a value on the heap, you can box it. So this will look really similar to what we have on lines 9 through 11, but instead we're putting it in a box. And once again, I added an unnecessary semicolon. Let's go ahead and take care of that. Now we can run our actual application through cargo run. And oops, looks like we have an unused variable, but it still ran. Go ahead and clean up that unused variable. 
Now we can run our application one more time and you can see that everything works just like it did before. So what's the difference? Well, the main difference is where we're storing that in memory. So we've been able to store things on the stack in the past, but now we're leveraging the box, which is a smart pointer to store things on the heap. So what is a smart pointer? So smart pointers are like pointers, but they have a little bit of uh, functionality associated with them. They're usually implemented via structs, and they're structs that implement the drop trait and the deref trait. So the drop trait allows you to specify code to be ran when the implementer of that trait goes out of scope. The second trait, deref, allows you to work with the value contained in a smart pointer as if it wasn't contained in a smart pointer. So in the case of our user, despite it being boxed, we can still access the name as if we were working with a user and not a boxed user. Hopefully this has been helpful. This has been a really quick guide on how to box things in Rust. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments below. If you didn't like the video, um, you don't have to like or subscribe it. You can even dislike it. But please let me know in the comments below because I'd love to improve and see what I could do to help teach the things that you're interested in. Thanks.